This episode is part of the pool's Local Officials Stronger Together podcast series. It's one way we serve local officials through integrity, public service, fiscal responsibility, and operational excellence. As always, please direct specific questions about coverage to your risk management advisor. Welcome to episode 9D in the Risk Pool's Stronger Together podcast series. I'm your host, Scott Houston. State law mandates cybersecurity training for local government employees, elected officials, and appointed officials who have access to a local government computer system or a database and use a computer to perform at least 25% of their duties. This episode of the podcast is special because it's the first time the Department of Information Resources has certified a podcast as satisfying the state training requirement. So the audio in this podcast is taken directly from the TML Risk Pool's DIR certified training video in which the Risk Pool cyber guy, Ryan Burns, and his buddy, Hacker Hank, tell you about ways that Hank's hacks trick local government employees into sending money, downloading ransomware, and other bad things. Check out the video if you have time. It's really funny. It's linked next to this podcast. But if you don't have time for that, just take advantage of the convenience of just listening to this podcast if you want to do it that way. Right now, at this very moment, there are thousands of people trying to steal your money, your identity, and wreak havoc on your life. They want to get rich at your expense, and their schemes never sleep. Do I have your attention? I hope so. My name is Ryan Burns, the cyber guy, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about cyber crimes, cyber security, and what you can do to prevent yourself and your organization from becoming a cyber victim. First up... Ryan, what are you doing without me? Oh no, Hacker Hank, everyone's favorite cyber criminal. Ryan, you know a few things about cyber crimes, but I've been thriving in those digital streets since the internet was just a little baby that Al Gore put to sleep with a little bottle at night. You need some real insider information. Well, okay, Hank. Thank you, sort of, for coming back. Back to where I was. What is cybersecurity and why does it matter? Let's answer the second question first. In 2021, cyber crimes cost Texans over $600 million in losses and affected over 40,000 victims. Yep, my cronies and I have been doing strong work out there. And you know who our biggest target was? The public sector. I know, meaning cities and organizations just like you. Yep, taking it to the man. Cyber crimes and cyber criminals aren't just fodder for fiction novels and movies, they are real. So back to the first question. What is cybersecurity? I know a bit about that. How to hack, but also how to stop hackers just like me. So please remind everyone why such a vile and notorious hacker like you would be willing to help us out. Sure, Ryan. I've been hacking ever since I was a little boy. When I hacked the Pac-Man game at my local arcade to get myself the highest score. I've been hooked on hacking ever since. But when it comes to hacking cities, I've just gotten bored. I've been using the same old tricks for years, and I need a new challenge. I want cities to level it up. Plus, I have a lot of enemies in the biz, and they're all getting rich way too easily. So I'm sharing all my tried and true method in hopes cities will wise up and shut off the funnel that's funding my foes. That's very generous. Don't get used to it, Ryan. I want to fund my trips to the Bahamas, but stop all those two-bit hackers from their beach vacations. Okay. So let's talk about cybersecurity, which is the practice of protecting networks, devices, and data from unauthorized access. First, we're gonna talk about the types of data in your organization so we know what we're protecting. And stealing. Not if we're doing things right. Second, we'll discuss the four pillars of cybersecurity. The towers I love to topple. Third, we'll discuss common cyber threats. My personal playground but also best practices to avoid them. Make me work for it, Ryan. And finally, how to respond and report a crime if it does occur. You ready, Hank? A good hacker's always ready, Ryan. The first step for information security is knowing what types of information you have and what you're responsible to protect. There are five major levels of information. The least sensitive level is public information. 
It's typically general information about your city, number of employees, address. <laughs> Boring. Everybody knows this stuff. I can't really make money off of it, Ryan. Right. It isn't sensitive and wouldn't hurt you if it was disclosed, so it requires very little protection. With each rising level, the data becomes more sensitive and requires more consideration and layers of protection. Proprietary information is information that gives you the competitive advantage that you don't want the world to know. Private information relates to employees or sensitive policies. Great for HR to know, bad for hackers to steal. Confidential information is data that helps within the organization, but that you might not want competitors to find out. The highest is your sensitive data. This is the information that could truly harm your city or organization if disclosed and therefore requires the highest integrity and the most limited access. I can make money off every level above public. It sells on the dark web like candy. Or I can use it to ransom your organization and make you pay me to get it back. It's a blast. So take an inventory of what information you have access to and what you're doing to protect it or better yet, what you should be doing. I love data, and as they say, data is knowledge, and knowledge is power, and power is money in my pocket. <laughs> money I can spend when I go to Barbados every year. Now, I can hack this data at lots of levels, but there are four main pillars. Think of these as doorways into your organization. There's the machine level. These are your physical devices. Say you lose your phone or a laptop. I find it, boom. Or if you've got a hacker in your workplace and you leave your workstation unintended, boom, we've got you again. I'll hack your machine in a number of ways. Weak passwords, obsolete antivirus software, unprotected flash devices, lack of controls when you're on a public network, or lack of administrator controls that would prevent me from tossing on a fun little malware program. Next up, the data level. This is the data itself, stored on a hard drive or in the cloud. Most employees aren't aware of how much data they have or where it's all stored. But what happens when a hacker holds it for ransom or it gets completely wiped out? Is it backed up? Is it protected? Organizations put their data level at risk when employees aren't aware of the data created and the cost of losing it. Offsite backups aren't done or not done regularly. Employees don't believe their data is valuable enough for an attack or data isn't encrypted to protect it from hackers. You know, Ryan, I'm not above dumpster diving for all the computers just to see what data I can find on those tossed out hard drives. Why does that not surprise me, Hank? Next up is the network level. If I can hack your network, I can get to every connected computer and its data. No computer is an island these days, Ryan. We're all connected. This stuff is much easier to hack when there isn't a firewall or antivirus software. You aren't doing scans that search for my malware, meaning my evil software will have longer to do its thing. There are no off-site backups. That way, I will know you'll pay me lots of cash to get your data back. Or there are no administrator controls on networks. And finally, my best friend, the internet level. Connecting all the world's knowledge and computers and data, and if you're not careful, when and where you connect, boom. I'm going to get you. You think you're just having a little latte and doing some work, but I'm still in a latte of your information while you're just sipping on your little coffee. That's a good one, Hank. Thanks, Ryan. I've worked on that one for a while. Your internet level is at risk when your organization has no controls over when and where team members connect to the internet. Public Wi-Fi is used continuously with no regard for risks. Administrators do not limit access or control. Work devices are used away from the workplace repeatedly, or employees are simply unaware of the risks. Now, Hank, tell us how you and your friends actually hack in and commit these crimes. Happily, Ryan, but don't call the other hackers my friends. I'm a lone wolf on the prowl for data. I want your information, or sometimes I just want to mess everything up and watch your world burn. That's messed up, Hank. Hackers gonna hack, brother. But hackers like me can hurt in a number of ways. We can steal your information, modify it, or I can just gain access and do whatever I want. My criminal mind loves all of these. After I have it, I can sell it for a profit, I can ransom your organization, or I can do really mean things like make all of your direct deposit paychecks go into my bank account. Basic stuff, Ryan. He's right, and he's a threat. So let's look at the definition. 
A threat is the potential targeting of a network or system in an attempt to damage, harm, or disrupt its capability to operate. This targeting can potentially impact the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your organization's data. All right, so who is a threat actor? Besides Hank here. <laughs> well, it's anyone who tries to exploit vulnerabilities in an organization's system or users. They want to profit, financial or otherwise, damage the victim or organization, either financially or reputationally, gather data to trade it or sell it, or, in his case, just evil curiosity. We don't often know why threat actors choose the crimes they do, but we have to be on the ready. I can tell you why I do it, Ryan. You ever had a Mai Tai in Jamaica? I don't need any other reason than that. So, Hank, what does a cyber attack look like? As a cyber criminal, our attacks look differently. I'm not gonna run up and shout, give me all your money. You might just say no, and actual human interaction makes me very nervous. So my attacks look more like an email, a text, a phone call, or even a fake invoice. I'm trying to get information from you, like credit card information, bank accounts, social security numbers, or maybe for you to let me log into your computer remotely. Sometimes it's just an itsy bitsy link I want you to click on, or an email attachment I want you to open. So attacks can be emails, phone calls, texts, USB hard drives, Internet of Things devices, or even an old school letter. Ryan, I've got fancy names for all my schemes, like phishing, when I'm seeing if I can get you to respond to an email with personal information. Vishing, voice phishing rather than email. Spear phishing, it's targeted phishing aimed at a particular individual. Welling. That is spear phishing for the big dogs in your organization. Social engineering, when I use a context or a story to engage you before scamming you. Malware, installing bad programs on your computer. And of course, ransomware, installing bad programs that shut down your computer until you give me exactly what I want. So we've gotta always be on the lookout. Here are some things to help you spot a cybercrime before it happens. Strange email link or one with a mismatched or misleading URL, poor spelling or grammar, requests for personal information, an offer that just seems too good to be true, something that you didn't initiate, requests for money or payments, messages that include threats, or something that just doesn't look right. Just having a healthy skepticism will go a very long way. So you find yourself facing a threat. An email is coming to your inbox with a fishy attachment. What do you do? The most powerful key in your security system is a very simple one, delete. If it's truly important, that person will reach out another way. But if you need to respond, verify the details or situation with a trusted friend. Call someone, but don't call the number in the email. If a scammer is good, that will all be part of the ruse. It's best to call someone at your IT department. You'd be amazed at what information I can get simply by asking. I love to make it seem like a high pressure, super time sensitive matter. Folks love to think they're helping me out of a jam, and they are helping me go to jam makeup. <laughs> Another good one, Hank. You should report everything internally according to your organization's policy. Contact all involved parties, such as contractors or vendors, and report all cyber crimes to law enforcement. Now, let's talk about training and best practices. As a city or organization, you need to make sure that everyone has the right tools, training, and empowerment to help. You need to safeguard against unauthorized access to all your systems and information. Make sure you have strong passwords and policies. Implement MFA, or multi-factor authentication, on all accounts. An example would be where they send you a text message with a code at each login. It may seem tedious, but it's great protection. Electronically lock all devices when not in use. Patch your systems, limit access to work areas and digital data and systems to only the authorized personnel who need access. Securely lock all physical locations, including server rooms, hardware, and appliances. And train everyone on your policies, like making them watch this video. Right, Hank? Oh, sorry, Ryan, I fell asleep. I was up all night trying to hack a city with great cybersecurity. I couldn't get in. So this really does work. Let's talk about best practices for your data. How you store it and dispose of it is very important. Utilize the 3-2-1 method. Three copies of your data, 
two different types of media and at least one of those copies off-site. Encrypt your data when possible. Monitor and limit access to only employees who need it. When computers get replaced, make sure you erase or destroy everything possible. I'm talking about reformatting old computers and going full office space on anything else if needed. In this era of working remote, you also need guidance to team members who don't use a conventional office. Cyber threats are everywhere, and remote workers need to be even more aware of how to navigate this new world. Remote workers should always follow your organization's policies and procedures. Use only approved devices, no personal computers. Strictly use your organization's VPN everywhere, especially when using public Wi-Fi. And use your phone's hotspot before public Wi-Fi. Guard your screen when possible. When working from home, make sure your router and all the software is up to date with the latest security and that you're always using a strong password on your personal network. Create a second Wi-Fi network just for work if possible. Lock your device while away, even at home, so family members don't accidentally throw you into a bad network situation. Never leave your computer unattended in public. Never use your work device to access personal accounts like bank accounts, social media, or online shopping. This is great stuff, Ryan. This is gonna keep me and my no talent cronies out of your data and your life. <laughs> All right, now with this training, it's time to take your cybersecurity assessment. Any final words, Hank? Look, we may seem smart because we live in a dark cyber world and it sounds computery and complicated, but our most successful crimes aren't smart. They simply feed off people making dumb decisions. Don't let it be you. Wise words, Hank. Now, good luck on your test. Okay, that was pretty funny, right? You've got three action items for today. First, remember to think before you click and always verify transactions through out-of-band authentication prior to sending money. Second, if you haven't already, check out episode 9C of this podcast to hear from a city manager exactly what it's like to really get hacked. It's a really compelling episode. And then finally, your local government will need to certify to DIR that all those who are required to take the training have done so. See the steps to do that in the description of this podcast. And that's it. Be sure to stay cyber safe and always call the risk pool first if you get hacked. To review written materials associated with the presentation or to ask Scott a question, please visit www.tmlirp.org and click on the Stronger Together podcast link. Please remember that the information in this episode is provided for informational purposes only and doesn't constitute legal advice. We recommend that you review the podcast and the accompanying written materials with your attorney prior to taking action.